The book is called Tomorrow's Energy Need Not Be Fuel. And uh, in that book, he gave reference to what I'm talking about, that, <clears throat> uh, that of levitation, that um, the bumblebee, when he starts to beat his wings, when he starts to flap his wings, there's a little cavity, a hollow cavity next to the larynx inside his, his system that's hollow. And when he beats his wings, he starts to resonate this energy, and it goes back and forth, just similar to um, to a guitar strumming on one side of the room and hitting the same chord on the other side of the room, or uh, somebody hitting a high C and breaking a crystal. It's the same thing. It's resonance. And he said, what they do, they resonate. And when they resonate, they eventually reach the resonant of the field around them. And he explained it this way to me, that the earth was, of course, spinning, but it was, it was operating on a frequency of 8.5 hertz per second or so forth. And he says, once this bumblebee hits that resonant frequency of its surroundings, it becomes a free agent. It creates a magnetic bubble around itself, and it can go anywhere it wants. And I said, well, that's not in any of the science books. He said, I know. <laughs> You, know, you probably never see it there either, but that's that's what happens. They'll discover it someday and bring it out, but it, it's just uh, we have a conventional way of doing things and then we have a natural way of doing things, and they're totally different. They're diametrically opposed. The important point here is the bees. As you've heard, the bumblebee shouldn't really be able to fly. Those wings are way too small to lift that chubby little body off the ground. In fact, it's a bit of a conundrum also for the mainstream scientists. They can travel in perfectly straight lines for long distances without any deviation, even during a howling crosswind. Because of the resonant frequencies produced by the vibration of their wings, they create a bubble in the ether, protecting them from any outside interference. So levitation by sound waves is a real-world effect. Do you want more proof? The, the bug wings themselves uh, were creating an anti-gravity phenomena under certain conditions. These technologies are known and used in modern day aircraft manufacture. The vortexes being produced are helping the lift properties of the aircraft. This is why the engines are forward of the wings. If they were underneath the wings then the vortex wouldn't do its job. It has to flow over and not under the wing. Next time you fly, try to listen to the hum of the engines. It changes pitch when going into and out of cruise mode. Just pure speculation here, but there are large cavities in the wings, which are tested with compressed air and not liquids, by the way, and the engines produce a distinct hum, just like the bees do. So the tale of two victors comes to an end. I highly recommend watching all the video links in the description box as you will gain a much better understanding of the natural forces at work here. As always, this is just my own musings and they are by no means definitive, but the scientific evidence and the observable effects definitely backs up the theory. Two highly intelligent gentlemen that have had their research largely ignored by the mainstream scientific community. But the manufacturers are covertly using the technology to fly their planes. As per usual, it's us, the consumer, who's losing out, while these huge companies are reaping the financial benefits. <laughs>